Are you wondering what is the best way to put up posters or art on your walls? Perhaps you want to decorate your rental apartment or dorm room walls and not worry about damaging the painted surfaces or ripping your posters. Well, you've come to the right place, because in this video I will be testing 8 different readily available products. I will also assess them through different categories like ease of use, how long each item holds up your art, wall damage after removal and other points. There were some products that have really surprised me. So, if you are a student and want to save on wall painting fees at the end of the year, keep watching till the end, because at the end I will make a useful chart and tell you who the winner is. Hi, I'm Leila. Welcome to my studio, where I will be running those tests. Your results may be a little different, because the paint and the wall surface can have an impact on stickability and some other factors. I have painted these walls myself, so I can definitely tell you that they are done in a quality way with the undercoat and few layers of acrylic based white wall paint. But just in case, I will test everything on two painted wall surfaces, the jabboard wall and the cinder block wall. Oh, and if you want to see more behind the scenes videos and tutorials that are not available here on YouTube, go to my Patreon page. When you become a patron, you can choose if you'd like to enter a monthly draw to win art or you might like suggesting the ideas for videos and even voting for the next tutorial to come. So go over there and check it out. Okay, so here are the eight different products I will be testing. None of them are sponsored in any way. They are just some of the most common things and you probably have at least some of them around your place. By the way, the sponsor of this video is Southern New Hampshire University. So if you've been thinking about getting a degree, you might like to check out SNHU. Southern New Hampshire University offers online and campus-based programs. Getting a degree can open up a lot of doors and present new opportunities. It can help you gain confidence and feel that you have the necessary skills to take that next step. SNHU offers a large range of degrees from communications, computer science, data analytics, to finance, game development, graphic design, and so much more. If you are already enrolled in a college, but might like to transfer because you are changing your major or want to study online, Southern New Hampshire University makes it easy by allowing you to transfer your previously earned credits. So if it sounds like you, go to snhu.com edu slash ataya clickable link is available under the video to check what southern new hampshire university can offer you and request free information item number one which i already had in my studio is white tech it's easy and safe to use even for a child it stuck quite well to the cinder wall Blue tech I didn't have, so I got it from a local stationery store. It was also really easy to use and didn't require any tools. Both of the tag looked great uh, when I was using them with thick watercolor paper. But for my chipboard wall tests, I used a regular printer paper and it didn't look very pretty as it was showing through the paper, especially the blue tag. Because the blue and white tag is quite thick, it will prevent your poster hanging flat and may appear as a bulge. Next, I wanted to test a double-sided tape, which was still reasonably easy to use, but you needed scissors. So again, if you are doing this project with little children, for example, you might need to supervise them. I went on quite easy and had a good grip, but keep watching to see how it did during the time of the test. Next, I tested the Scotch wall safe tape, 
which I also got from a local warehouse store. I was a bit concerned that the tape will be disruptive visually as it goes over the paper, but it literally disappeared when I pressed it firmly against the wall. Okay, soft tack masking tape. You have probably seen me using it in the painting tutorials before. It's very gentle, so should not cause any damage. It was probably the most intruding product visually, as it is very visible. There's no getting around that. Okay, let's move on to adhesive photo mounts. They are designed to deal with photographs, but I wanted to see how well they could do on the wall. Glue dots was another interesting product. Very easy to use and went on the wall quite well. In addition, it's also acid free, so it's not supposed to cause yellowing or damage to the paper in that way. It was also undetectable through the paper. And now something else that caught my eye, a clear mount. It's designed to go on walls and other surfaces, but it's the most heavy duty product out of all the tapes that I'm testing. It was the most difficult to cut and its jelly-like texture just kept sticking to the scissors. A larger piece of it can hold a heavy object up to few kilograms in weight. I think it could be great for earthquake-prone areas, for example, for securing heavy objects. Now the real test begins. I will leave them here for two months and see what happens. Well, I didn't have to wait for too long for the first failure. Three days after the pieces went up, I entered my studio to find one of them on the floor. It was the photo mount, which is fair enough as it wasn't designed to go on the wall in the first place and especially textured one anyway. Next couple more days go by and I've heard a sound of another test piece falling. This time it was double-sided tape. One piece was still stuck to the wall and another to the paper. Two months later the tests are still holding up, as well as all the small tests on the jib wall. Let's see how well they will come off. Here is the heavy-duty clear mount. I definitely would not use it on the walls. Maybe tiled ones only, as it was really hard to remove and it ripped the paper too. The photo mount that fell off the wall after only a few days was really stuck onto the paper. So use it on a more of a permanent paper to paper connections perhaps. I would say the same thing for a double sided tape unfortunately plus keep in mind that it yellows over time as well. Blue tag came off, but left residue on the paper. It did come off my wall clean, but I have a feeling if your walls have been painted years ago or not prepped properly, you may damage the painted surface because the grip was quite strong. White tag performed similar to the blue tag. 
but the mark on the paper wasn't as bad. On the plus side, they are both reusable. So I guess that makes it a money saving right there. The wool safe tape, I'm really impressed with that, came off the wool and the paper without any issues or marks. Softtech masking tape did really well too and caused no damage on the wall or art. The glue dots, however, not only ripped the paper, but were a real pain to remove off the wall. I literally spent about 15 minutes scraping everything off. I've made a chart to outline all the pluses and minuses. I'll start with the worst performers. Photo mounts and double-sided tape. Not only did they not stick well to the wall, they actually fell off, they also damaged the paper as well to a degree where I couldn't pull them off. So I wouldn't use them, even for a short-term wall decorating. Next worst in line is glue dots. They did hold up, but damaged the paper and were very difficult to remove off the wall. I can imagine them causing some real damage to a fragile wall. Next on the list is soft tack masking tape, because it just didn't look very nice and was visually intrusive really taking attention away from what you might want to display. Heavy duty mounting scotch uh, would be absolutely wonderful for hanging heavy objects, but wasn't super easy to apply or remove for that matter. White and blue tags are very close, with blue being a little worse than the white because of, you know, more visible residue left on the paper and showing through the paper more. However, I really liked how easy it is to use, how well they both held up, and that you save money with it being reusable. But I would be very cautious using it for prolonged periods of time or on precious posters and fragile walls, for that matter. And the winner is wall safe tape. It got the most points for being aesthetically non-disruptive as it pretty much disappeared when stuck on. It held up really well, was easy to use and left no marks on the wall or paper. It came off both surfaces really easily too. You can try reusing it, but it might compromise the staying power of it really. So now you know what I have on my walls holding up my sketches. Let me know uh, what you like to use and perhaps you might have your own favorites, maybe even things that I can't find around in New Zealand. Let me know. I'd be really interested to know what you guys use. I want to thank the sponsors of this video and say a big thank you to my wonderful patrons. You guys rock. I hope you all have a lovely, lovely day and thank you for watching.